All right, so what we're going to do today is check out some of the native instrument instruments, and we're going to start with FM8. So just like any other, I'm on a stereo instrument track. I'm going to bring up an instrument, and I'm going to choose FM8. And if I click on my keyboard, I hear a sine wave. It says new sound. It's basically a single oscillator um, sine wave. I'm going to go through this top section here and then this left section and not get into very many of the nitty gritty details. There are a lot and I'm not lying. I don't really know what all of them do. So I can point you to sources. If you get deep, you want to get deep, we'll go there. Um, but as of now, I want to know, know how to navigate, how to bring up some presets, how to change certain sounds, how to tweak things and morph them as you'd like. All right, so starting up here, this is called, this section here is called the navigator view, and you can toggle that on and off. Um, not sure why, except that real estate's always at a premium, and you can toggle on and off the keyboard. You know, with that there, you can click with your mouse. It's kind of useful to, to see. You also see certain things, like when you press chords on your keyboard, they're shown there. Uh, you have your file drop down. If you want to create a new sound or open a sound, save or save as, import various forms of sounds, formats. You have a quick button to save as. You have your display window. Um, if you click on it, you can navigate, you know, in a vertical way. Same section over here in the navigator window. So that's a few different ways to navigate through different sounds. Here you can turn on and off the arpeggiator very quickly, super quickly. This is the sine wave without the arpeggiator. That is the arpeggiator. Okay, we'll get into that later. Uh, this is called the morphing, kind of the morphing preview pane, I would call it. Um, we'll get into a little bit about what morphing is. You can also go to the Easy Morph window to see more about that in, dis in, in display. Uh, poly stands for polyphony. How many voices, how many sound, uh, notes can be played at once by a particular sound? If you click and scroll, you can turn that up to a whole bunch of different sounds or voices. We'll leave it at eight because that's what it was. The CPU um, meter or display just shows you how much of your CPU is being eaten up by a particular sound. Uh, instrument at that moment um, when you start to play you'll see the percentage go up if the you know shouldn't go up much if it's running high something's going on all right over here we have what's called the spectral analysis spectrum analysis window if i choose something a little bit more complex than this the sine wave you'll see um, actually that's interesting let me just do that one let me go new sound your sine wave is a single oscillator tone. It's one wave. And most sounds that we listen to are not. So you see just this one spike at one. If I click on that, you see a whole bunch of different things. So you have spikes all over the place. These are the overtones or the harmonics that are being played as part of any given sound. Um, I'm going to stick with this sine wave for part of this at least. All right, um, over here you have what's called the panic button. If a sound is stuck or just won't turn off, and you just, just hit that button, it'll stop it in its tracks. MIDI Learn is very, very cool. Um, I'm just going to go very quickly to the master section. I'm going to click on MIDI Learn, and then I'm going to click a slider randomly, it could be a knob or anything, and I'm going to use the first knob that's available on my MIDI keyboard, and now I have automated control over that in real time, so I can play around with that if I wanted to. Um, so going back, that's basically this top navigation bar. So now over here in the left navigator, navigator section, the browser is key, okay? So we can turn off the browser, get rid of it, 
But it's really, what it is is a database. And we have three banks so far in this, um, in this synth. And you can narrow in on your types of sounds by clicking on what are called attributes. Um, I want a piano type of sound. Well, if I didn't have that clicked, I have all these various sounds. Click piano, it narrows in on piano types. Okay, it's not exactly a piano, it's a piano type of instrument. Now, if I choose a grand piano, there's only one choice. And it's still not really a grand piano by any means. Remember, this is this is synthesis. These are artificially created sounds based on um, oscillators, which are or were now they're they're, uh, they're digital, but they're um, tone creators, sound generators, and they are synthetic synthesis. All right, so. This is super important. It's important not only like for you to find sounds quickly that you want, um, but when you're making your own sounds, you add attributes to them so that you can narrow them down and find them as well. So that gets us quick, nicely to the attributes window, which shows that on this particular sound that I loaded up, Metal Sequence 1, was made by a guy named Mike Dalio four native instruments and it comes from the FM7 legacy bank and these are all of the attributes that he chose to put in it it's percussive yeah definitely it's a loop it's not just playing one it's not a single hit it's sequence loop it's synthetic sounding it sounds processed it's got a long release definitely all right so if we were to make our own sound we could add um, attributes to it, and we'll get into that some other time. All right, the master window, you have your output, which is essentially volume. Let me turn it off. Um, you have input volume, which is used when um, FM8 is in an effects, is being used as an effects module, which you could use if you plug it in to a different uh, type of track. Say you have a vocal and you wanted to use some of the effects that are in FM8, you could do that. Polyphony, this is the number of voices available. As I mentioned, you could click and scroll here and change that. You can also change it here. You see that it changes there. And again, um, this button, mono, not so useful for that particular type of sound. You can only play one sound at a time basically and that's useful for some basses some leads um, different things uh, you can detune the sound pitch it up or down you can transpose it Are, again more for when you're going to create your own sounds and, and you're really getting into synthesis and you're shaping a, a waveform so portamento is essentially the slope see how i just killed that uh it's kind of the slope between notes you'll hear um on heavily portamented sounds like do and you hit two notes you're going to hear a slide between them, which is kind of hip. Um, essentially, this is the arpeggiator. You can turn it on. Uh, syncs to your session tempo, which right now I didn't change it, so it's just 120. And your step sequencers. You can choose various um, note values for the number of steps in the arpeggiator, which we'll touch on in a second. Quality, this is kind of like some analog noise. And really, 
This is about you playing with your sounds and, and getting to know what's available and what you can do. All right, um, so that's very basic overview of the master window. The effects, a little bit easier to explain. You have all these effects available to you. That particular sound had chorus delay. You turned it on. You can turn it on or off there at least. And it disappears. Uh, you have your amount, essentially your wet dry uh, ratio. The copy and paste, you can do some copy and pasting of, of, of different things. But more importantly, I think, is that all of these effects are available and they're in serial, meaning that you know they're in order from top to bottom depending where they're used. If you only use the tremolo, this is all going to be easier with just the simple sine wave. So if I turn on the tremolo, that movement to modulation effect, modulate to move, and I turn on the overdrive, you're going to see that the overdrive comes before the tremolo. So your signal is going through the overdrive into the tremolo. Uh, I'll stick the top one in between. Okay. Um, I bet this is also something that we could MIDI learn real quick. MIDI learn, click on mouth, grab a knob, and now I have control of that on this knob. If I click mod wheel, I have control over it using my mod wheel. Okay. Um, and, you know, I'll demonstrate a few of these, but really there's so much to just to play with. Cabinet. Change the type of cabinet. All right, so now that's a little bit boring with just the, uh, the sine wave. Let's see, acid stew. Nah, I don't want that kind of stuff. Okay. Cabinet. Right, so you can really change the sound by these kind of cabinets. The talk wah, I love wahs. Phaser. So you get the idea. Play with the effects. The arpeggiator, if I can do this quickly enough and not get sidetracked, um, essentially an arpeggio is a series of notes within a scale or a chord played individually. So if a chord is played, you know, you play three notes at once through the chord, the arpeggiator or arpeggio of that chord is playing through that chord in a particular um, pattern. If I turn the arpeggiator on and I play that same chord, it is playing through that chord in a particular pattern. Now, if I click on this drop down here, I can choose a variety of different patterns that are pre uh, pre just done. That didn't do much, that one. Let's see, up to eight notes. All right, these are just different patterns. So you can record at a certain point. You can change um, the note value. Let's place eighth notes, the 16th notes, so there's gonna be more of them. Um, you can increase the number of steps. I don't really like that. I don't like the sound at all, but it doesn't matter. Let's see, Modernist House. Okay, and then there's a variety of, you know, we'll get into tie and all that 
I'll just go over the arpeggiator in a different video altogether. Um, but play around, like you're not gonna break anything. Like if you do these octaves, what you're gonna hear are higher note values as it goes through the steps. Because it's actually telling you, okay, when it gets to this step in the pattern, jump up two octaves or jump down two octaves. Um, transpose. Is out of tune. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So get rid of the sound. Uh, it's the arpeggiator. Morph. Okay. So if I'm going to do this quickly, I'm going to go back to the browser and I'm going to choose for these four quadrants different sounds. And I would like basses for some reason. So I'm going to choose. Um, sub bases. I forget that I usually use um, massive for bass. All right, I'm going to take bass arati and put it in this lower quadrant. I'm going to take bass guitar and put it in the upper left. By double clicking, I engaged it to be my main sound. Bass guitar and bass groove. Okay, so I can move this red square here, but I'm going to do it in the, the morph window just to go over this a little bit. Okay, so you do have more of your synthesizer controls here your low frequency oscillators, timbre. Uh, ADSR is important universal for synthesis. You have the attack of a particular oscillator of the sound, how quickly it engages, decay, how long it plays for, sustain, how long it plays for once the key is uh, disengaged, and then release, how long it takes to get down to zero again. Amplitude, how quickly it gets up to volume, release, how quickly that volume decreases ADSR okay you'll see that in every synth in some way or the other all right I have some more effects and whatnot right now I just want to kind of go towards this this morpher so you see you have bass guitar bass guitar 2 bass arati and bass groove and if I start moving this around it starts to become this is the bass guitar 2 sound bass guitar, bass arati, bass groove. Now I say morph, let's move the slider. As you move around, you're kind of combining certain elements of the sound. You can randomize it, this kind of spreader. create your own sound at this point and it's kind of an easier way a more visual kind of random way to combine sounds than by twisting knobs and whatnot we'll leave that alone at that I'll point out the expert window this is where you're really playing with uh, individual oscillators getting the waveforms I will do a quick demo of something. So I'm going to go again back to the simple sine wave. And the only one that's being used right now is F. Okay. So a sine wave is the cleanest, you know, waveform there is. And it sounds very simple. Where's my modulation? My modulator was up. Okay. If I click here, there's a whole bunch of different types of waveforms. The most common uh, or sine, triangle, square, sawtooth. And you can hear how they sound. They have different qualities to them. Um, what am I doing over there? And, you know, this is how you create 
sounds. Um, now, let's see if I can... All right, so I'm feeding that F, I thought, feeding it through X, which is uh, an envelope. And then I'm going to feed X out, but who knows what the hell I'm doing. All right, this is a good time to end because I got lost. All right, um, so again, basically you have your browser, all these things. Oh yeah, I forgot to say that. That's all right. Uh, you can look at your browser in the actual um, database view, the browser view. If you click sounds, you see the hierarchy of where the sounds live on your hard drive. Uh, instruments versus effects, because effects are if you're using FM8 as an effects processor, okay? 21 minutes done.